you're listening to Linda Pinizzato of the Condo Expert. Now, the the name is is going to be changed to two different sessions, I think, because, you know, now I've been coming off of a little bit of condominium issues because we're bringing in life experiences. And life experiences means a lot of different topics. Like I've touched on, you know, pest control. I've touched on, uh, you know, the, the horrendous situation we have now with our government wanting to consider implementation of municipal property land transfer taxes. We've talked about the economy, life insurance and car insurance and, uh, you know, vehicles uh, like electric vehicles. So subjects have come to me through people contacting myself. And interesting enough, I think that they warrant a lot of airtime because they're important and they're things that you experience on day-to-day lives. So today we've been talking with Alfie Schlegel. And Alfie, like I know that your gymnastics center, you know, it's wonderful. Earlier we had my daughter-in-law because she was over at the gym and uh, talked all about, you know, the great benefits and what the kids were up to right now. But, you know, I'm sure that when parents contact you and they want to enroll their children, do they not uh, then ask the next question is, is not only the cost, but the insurances? Well, of course, and that has to be expected with any sport. I pay insurance for all the other activities that my children are involved with. Gymnastics, the nature of the sport itself, the moment you step through the door, anyone that is participating in my facility must be insured for their safety and well-being, including the parents. So what Andrea experiences when she comes to my facility is sort of a package deal with her children because they still need her until the age of three when they'll be in on their own. So it's minimal, I believe. I actually branched off with an insurance company who was focused solely on recreational gymnastics because my program does not involve elite level gymnastics. We're not competing. We're not traveling. We don't have a foam pit. We're not doing high-end skills. It is the foundation of the sport. So luckily, they were able to recognize my program along with many others who are in the know now about this program where we just have to worry about children in recreational sport. We're not paying the costs of the elite athletes who are in the same facility. So I was very pleased about this because I want the parents to, of course, be insured and their children, but I don't feel they should be paying the same insurance as the elite athletes who are in a much higher level and and much riskier at that too. Well, you know, it's funny because I'm sure that there's chil- there's people out there that uh, enlist their, you know, they register their children into different programs, regardless of what kind of a program, but they, they register them even on day camps and stuff like that. Or even, heck, I mean, think about it for a moment. You know, last year there was all this talk about daycare centers yep. and unlicensed daycare right, right, centers. Right, so right. the fact that, you know, it seems to me that a lot of parents need to make sure that wherever they put their children, that those facilities have gone ahead and done what you've done, yeah. arranged for insurance coverage. Well, you coverage. shouldn't turn your nose up to it. No, that, they, that's the you know, it may not even do. be a question right. they ask. Right. Well, they should ask. When right. you are researching a facility, some of the key questions, and I know that we have an incredibly safe environment. We create the environment that I want my children to thrive in and parents. So it's safe, it's clean. And, you know, that's all you can ask of a, of a gym owner. You you just want to make sure that everyone understands what's involved and what, what the insurance costs are. If you're not asking those questions, you're not you know, doing right by your children or yourself. You shouldn't be surprised if down the road, oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you. Oh, yeah, Um, no, that should be, that actually should be the first question. And you should know what it covers and how long the insurance is covered for because every, my facility, my year end is June, I start up with summer camps. So depending on when you sign up, it's just a non-negotiable fee. It goes to Mm -hmm. my insurance company and I feel better, you should feel better walking into a gymnastic environment. But again, we create a very safe environment environment, we also stand by our progressions. And I think if you're not just asking children to do it, just throw it, just do whatever you want. I, you can't do that in a gymnastic environment. You must have instilled lesson plans and mm-hmm. include progressions. So I know that I do all of these things. Therefore, it's a, a, a very safe environment, as safe as I can make it. 
So that, like I, I know when we talked, it was interesting because the insurance fee for a new participant under the age of three includes one supporter. Right. So if there's an alternate supporter, that then they can attend, they can attend one time. One time visit. Perfect. Right. Okay. And then upon the second visit, right. then they have to so uh, we have, a lot have of, an insurance fee. Absolutely. We have a lot of parents who aren't quite sure or because of their work schedules on Saturday, right. they decide, let's sign us both up. Then we're both covered. We don't have to worry about it. We can alternate. What we do try to well, do. the thing is, is I'll, I'll step in. The, the coverage is not expensive. It's only twenty two dollars plus HST. Just Correct. so that the public doesn't think it's like a hundred dollars or something. It's only twenty two dollars plus HST. Yeah. So it's really minimal for the amount of protection. The fact that you have the peace of mind. Right. Right. And, you know, the benefits of having the insurance right. protection. I think you should pay it regardless of what sport you're in. Absolutely. I think it's peace of mind. My son is archer, and through the Ontario Archery Association, I pay a $45 fee. I feel better knowing that my son Cameron is insured every time he steps into that archery arena. So, it, you know, it's one of those things we have to live with. If you want your child participating in organized sports or at any level of the game, I think it's important that you are protected. And and I can't imagine running a gymnastic facility with without insurance. Oh, no, you wouldn't be able to. Yeah. So so you've got a lot of different categories. You have like a taught camp, and that is your 18 to 36 month. And basically, you run them on, you know, half, and then you have half day camps. So those ones you run like Tuesdays and Thursdays, like rest of the summer coming up. Right. And then you have half day camps. And they're three hours. Three hours. So really? it involves quite three a bit. Three hours. And don't let that scare you. No, because that's great. You know what? I, <laughs> I think it's, I, it's I don't, perfect. I don't show movies. I don't uh-huh. inundate the children with crafts. I actually give them a lot of gymnastic time. But having said that, we may do cooperative activities. We may bo- go back to our gym and create an atmosphere where we call it playground activities, where we're using different pieces of gymnastic equipment and coming up with a playground idea. We do team sports. We may have Fridays where it's beach volleyball day as our warm up, set up a net, and we're throwing a ball back and forth to one another. So it's it's really trying to engage the children, keeping them active, keeping them moving. I don't want any child sitting and well, just no, watching and on the sidelines. It's side great. Lines. And then they'll be sleeping very well by the time they get home. And later in the evening, they go home, they have Absolutely. dinner. I mean, their camp is running here, I think. They will so think better, one sleep to four. better, and eat better. Absolutely. One to four um, takes afternoon. out all that yeah burn out all that energy that's right. going on exactly and then you've got the full day camps though as well right. so other people like you know moms or dads i guess that working, uh, parents. working parents you know and we have to we have to clarify that one because i mean working parents right away we think of people that are away say at a corporate job or any type of job and they're actually away from home from nine to four but there's people that work from home uh, you know self-employed people that work from home but you know at the same time they they still need to have some quiet time with their kids away so the nine to four would actually benefit them as well well and i have parents who aren't working and their children still want to come too (laughs) right and and kudos to Uh our program because they enjoy it parents know that they're dropping off their children off in a safe environment Mm -hmm. that's you know it's it's enriching their lives they're benefiting from the monday to friday mega hours uh, where they might actually get a grip on that cartwheel that they've been trying to to achieve and you know it's just we're we're trying to get a well-rounded program where the children get to do some of the skills that they really want to learn, but they do understand it takes time. Sometimes these things don't happen overnight, but they're also having fun with with their friends and making friendships. It's all the same philosophy that we promote throughout the year. And the summer cramps, you mentioned 18 months, right through to a teens program. I actually well, do what a I was CIT ask program. You is how, what is the age brackets of your program? So the first program would be, I guess, up to three years to three. old. Mm-hmm. Right, okay. So you've got the 18 to 36 month. Correct. And then the next program is I do from... let three-year-olds do some of the three-hour programming. Now, okay. typically they come in with a sibling. Summer camp, the nature of summer camp is we have parents that need something to work for their family. And summer camp can be that time where your siblings can go in together. They can start at the same time and at the same time. But some of them may not do it for multiple days throughout the week. So we have choices there. Okay. And, and you really need to know your child best to know whether or not they can handle the length of activity, not so much the level, because I can take care of yeah. that, but the length of being away. A CIT program, which is my teens program that I promote a couple times throughout the summer, 
It's a one week program where I'm starting to tap into my young coaches, future coaches, if you will, and to give them a snippet of what it's like to become a coach in training. Right. Starting to learn some of the vocabulary that we use with children, getting them hands on with some of the younger kids in the gym. So would it would it be fair then for me to say that your one set of programs could potentially run from September until June? And then you've got another set of programs that would be June, say July, August, and then you could have slipped in there, maybe a camp uh, we situation do fall, in between. Winter and spring programs, exactly. Summer camps, okay, so you March break up. camps. Okay, we do drop ins, open gyms. Right. We're trying to tap into that's, the. That's needs. a lot of diversification. It, I mean, it it, it's almost it's covering uh, the whole sector of children. You know, from early ages all the way into the teenhood. It is, and we've recognized that over the years because for the past seventeen years we weren't always that program. It has come with time, with maturity, with age, with knowledge of knowing what people want in their lives. Our lives have changed. The school system is changing. We have all day kindergarten now. So we've had to make some adjustments within our program to accommodate what are people looking for. And and our goal is always just to keep children happy, healthy, engaged. I will take them halfway through a program. I'll never say no to a child joining a gymnastic program. You know, it's funny, you, you refer to what's called as the ABC. It's mm-hmm. uh, Active Body Behavior Connections. I'm glad you picked up on that. Thank you. <laughs> I love it. It's yeah. perfect. Because, yeah. well, you know, the other side, I mean, the physical literacy, but, you know, the other thing, you know, and I'm thinking about this too, is that, you know, not only we have, we have all nationalities, you know, children, you know, we have so much multiculturalism in our society. And it's really great for all the children to interact with one another. Other because you know at home they may be maybe their lifestyles are geared a different way sure. and then of course when they go to school that may become a little bit prominent and uh, but if you kind of introduce you know each other to one another so you much earlier together. you learn to work Absolutely. together tremendously when and, and that's what's really important I mean that's what our society is all about as the children get older too it, it just embraces and you know what I've watched over the years Linda is when they come to the gym it doesn't matter what's happened outside those doors mm-hmm. they come with the expectation that they're going to have a great time they're going to learn something they want to laugh and they want to play and they want to do it together it's a beautiful thing to watch children work together. And and it's my job as a teacher to try to enhance that social component of their 90-minute program or their one-hour program. I want the children to understand, to be respectful. We were talking to Andrea about taking turns. Sure, it can happen as early as age two. You just have to start giving them those ideas and the understanding that it's your turn after so and so. I mean, it's it's such a little thing, but it goes a long way down the road. Well, I think, you know, it's funny, there was topics all over, as you all know, I mean, we've seen it everywhere with that statement bullying. Yeah, and think about that for yeah. a second. You know, I mean, bullying, it's interesting, because there are children out there that have been exposed to more active sports growing up, and they've developed a stronger identity and then children that haven't been involved in right. anything that could easily find themselves being insecure about right. themselves right. and all of a sudden by the time they're 12 years old they could be a target towards right. b- bullying or even older for that matter I mean we've seen it everywhere all around North America probably all around the world so if you're developing a sense of confidence interaction teamwork all of those, you aside will from that. your physical mm-hmm. activity, you know, you're, you're actually paving the way for you not to be subjected to that, and, I would think. And you've brought up a really important point because that's one of the things that I have dealt mm-hmm. with over my 17 years is my daughter's really tall, my son's really s- small or very shy or this and that. Right. I put them in their age-appropriate group. Exactly. And that is the most important thing that I tried to do in the program. It doesn't matter how tall, how small. We get children of all shapes and sizes. You have to learn to work with one another. And we make them feel good about what they're doing. The other thing is, even within a program of uh, six children or eight, we will be at different levels, if you will, Mm -hmm. of the activity. That's okay. You shouldn't hold someone back because it will make someone else not feel great about what they're doing. This is where progressions come in. This is why you have to introduce different stages of an element. I'll take a simple cartwheel. Well, you know what? Different development is important because every child develops a different level. 
Interesting. That's exactly what you want to pay attention to. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato. Today we've been speaking with Elfie Schlegel. She is the director of Schlegel's Gymnastics Center just around the corner on Wycroft Road in Oakville. And you can reach them at 905-842-3537. Going to take a break. Please hang tight and we'll be right back. Linda Pinizzato. She's not your typical realtor. She's your real estate counselor, teacher, and advisor. Whether it's a house, townhome, or condo, when you're ready, she's your negotiator. With 34 years of experience, Linda guarantees that you have the real estate knowledge you need to make the right decisions. Call Linda Pinizzato at Sutton Group Quantum Realty, 416-561-7373, or visit her at lindapinizzato.com. Hello there, you're listening to Linda Pinizzato at the Condo Expert, and we're here at the studio at the Hayes FM. I'd love to hear from you. If you have a story, you want to be a guest on my show, give me an email, Linda at Linda Pinizzato, P-I-N-I-Z-Z-O-T-T-O dot com. You have a wonderful day, and we'll talk to you soon.